Greetings and salutations, this is Brian from MechPlay Studios. Let's see. I believe enough time has finally passed. Twenty years ago, more or less, Toei premiered the 24th iteration of its popular Super Sentai series, Midai Sentai Time Ranger. To celebrate the dawn of the new millennium, this show has a future and time travel motif. It follows four cadets of the Time Protection Department that chase a crime gang called the Londares family back through time to the year 2000, where they enlist a martial artist named Tatsuya to fill in the last Time Ranger slot. Their mission is to fight off the prisoners freed by the Londares and bring them to justice and prevent them from damaging the timeline. So you're probably tilting your head. Why am I doing this one before either Go Ranger the first or Zero Ranger the first to be officially adapted and released worldwide? Well, A, I felt like it. B, Go Ranger is a long series compared to the others. C, I don't have a lot of nice things to say about Zero Ranger, so we're gonna save that for another time. And D, unlike Power Rangers, where they're technically supposed to be watched in order, Super Sentai seasons don't share continuity with each other outside of versus movies and Go Kaiger, and thus can be watched cold in any order. Starting with aesthetics, the suits, despite being some of my favorites, subjectively are mixed. I love the black helmets with the colored visors as well as the futuristic silver trim. The time arrow motifs are okay, but they look rather redundant appearing both on the Time Rangers' visors and their chests. I've heard criticism of Goggle 5 suits looking like they're wearing bibs, and unfortunately that means these suits have been affected by that, so I have to be fair because I can't unsee it. And neither can you. I prefer my Sentai suits with a little more color than white, but I think the distribution of the white it does have should have been put somewhere else or replaced with silver. Either way, they have a striking appearance that signifies they come from the future. Time Fire, the sixth ranger, has a design I don't know how to feel about. We'll get into characterization later, but the idea is that Time Fire is supposed to be Time Red's rival, and thus he's an edgier red. Aesthetically, in a vacuum, he looks really good, fixing the bib issue and reflecting his nature as being from the present by replacing the silver with black. But among the others, he's a slightly modified red. The mecha are designed to put emphasis on function and versatility, as well as a unified aesthetic. The time jets themselves are nothing to write home about, but they act as part of a 3D formation system if you don't count their separated forms as a mode. They can combine together into Time Robo Alpha, a stronger, slower mode that fights with the sword and shield, Time Robo Beta, a weaker, faster form that fights with the Time Flyer vehicle in a gun mode, and Time Jet Gamma, a combined plane form that isn't used all that often in the show. Thanks to the subtle differences between the components, each combined form is aesthetically cohesive while being wholly unique from one another. It's controlled by the Time Rangers through single joysticks that can transform into replicas of the mecha's weapon for finishers. The Time Jets are summoned by another mecha called Providus, punching them back through the Time Gate. Things get a bit weird when we get to the others. Time Shadow is an automated auxiliary mecha that transforms from a stealth bomber into a ninja-like robot, complete with It can combine with both Time Robo modes in a much more elegant fashion than its toy, which just looks like Time Robos in a glorified stand. Beta has the same problem, but it does look a little bit better. Time Fire's mecha is a sentient dinosaur mech called V-Rex that can transform into a humanoid form. He actually doesn't pilot V-Rex, instead issuing voice commands for his changer. What? Look at the channel name, do you think I was just gonna gloss over the mechas? Don Dolnero looks appropriately like a fat, cigar-chomping alien mob boss, Lilo looks like this, I guess, among the more subtle of Sentai villainesses, and Gien has a rather detailed and articulate robot body. Each monster of the week is actually a previously captured prisoner, put into cryostasis as punishment for their crimes. As such, the finely crafted as usual monsters don't always just look like gimmicks with evil eyes and claws, but often looking like alien civilians, because aliens are commonplace in the future. Fights start off pretty rough, actually, with many fights being ruined with motion blur. I get what they're going for, they're moving so quickly that the camera can barely track them, but it's distracting, especially with this resolution. The showrunners eventually got the hint because they eventually dropped it save for specific moments like a special move developed in the middle of the series. Mecha fights feel very quick, often consisting of one enemy attack, one mecha attack, and then the finisher. We barely see Time Robo and Time Shadow separately after the combination is introduced. Logically, it makes sense, use the most powerful weapon on call to end the battle as fast as possible, but in terms of variety on a TV show, it gets kind of boring. The sets taking place in the future look sparse like modern Apple stores, but the lack of additional future set dressing beyond a couple consoles leaves something to be desired. This is one of the first seasons to start integrating CGI on a regular basis, and it 
does not mesh well. During the change sequence, you can catch a glimpse of rough CG renders of the actors' heads before they turn into the actual actors' heads before their helmets materialize. CGI is also used for a select few moments for the mecha, which also stand out, but because the time jets have simple shapes, it's not as jarring, though I don't understand what stopped them from using models in stop motion given that they have them available and they have them constructed. Also, in a joke more reminiscent of modern Sentai, in the episode where Yuri is made fun of for being tomboyish, the characters for ugly hit her on the head. It's bizarre and nothing like it happens ever again in the series. Other than that, the cinematography is pretty standard and competent, with a few standout shots here and there. The OP is one of, if not the best ever made. The vocal version, the instrumental version, and the English version all kick ass. The ED has this very smooth, sort of cyberpunk vibe. I like a lot of the inserts, but my favorite has to go out to the Time Fire theme. The story starts strong with the premise I mentioned at the start. In the year 3000, an alien gang called the Launders family stages a massive prison break, well, prison transport, by staging a time ship launch under false pretenses, knocking our cadets and the entire prison back in time to 2000. Our cadets are Yuri, the first pink leader and vengeful hardass, ISA, the brooding blue who doesn't care about dying, Domon, the loudmouth yellow with a philandering streak, and Sion, the sensitive green who hails from a destroyed planet. Once they realize they've been played, they're ordered to stop Londares from causing mayhem in 2000. However, they can't become Time Rangers without a Red Warrior to unlock their Chrono Changers, so they slap the remaining Changer on a dude named Tatsuya Asami, who becomes a Red Warrior. They stop a robbery, and then Yuri takes away Tatsuya's changer. They only needed him to unlock the system and thus they don't want to endanger a civilian. Tatsuya, a capable martial artist and unwilling heir to his father's business, wants to do something meaningful with his life and convinces the other Time Rangers to let him back on. After proving himself and thwarting another Launder's caper and doing a fine enough job piloting Time Robo, he's allowed to join the team for real. Knowing that they're going to be in 2000 for a while, Tatsuya opens an odd jobs company to give them income and an office in which to lodge. Every week, the Launder's family, led by fat-ass crime boss Don Del Nero, releases another prisoner to do something to acquire money, and the Time Rangers have to arrest and put them back into cryostasis. The first quarter of the series focuses on character episodes to let the Time Rangers get to know each other. The series proceeds like this for 18 episodes before the plot kicks in again. An odd choice for a running subplot follows this photographer named Honami. She starts out trying to get information about the Time Rangers for a newspaper until she's saved by Domon and spots them unmasked, thinking ISA is Time Yellow and falling in love with him. This plotline continues through the entire series. The plot starts up again with one of Del Nero's generals, Gien, assaults a research lab in search of a rare element instead of money. He intends to use the element to power his personal robot projects to cause destruction for its own sake, rather than to aid the rest of Londares in amassing money. It turns out that the lab was owned by the Asami company, Tatsuya's father's business, so they counter a threat with an advanced drill tank. This starts damaging the timeline to the extent where the higher-ups send back Time Shadow to help the Time Rangers with fights. Things escalate further when Asami founds the City Guardians, a mercenary force that will fight monsters on a property of those that pay up. One of the Guardians, Naoto Takizawa, was a colleague of Tatsuya's. Naoto, who grew up poor, always resented Tatsuya for not appreciating the perceived power given to him and sought to outdo him. When the lost mecha V-Rex turns up in Tokyo out of a time hole, Naoto locates his control unit, which speaks perfect English by the way. which turns out to be a changer, leading him to become Timefire, our 6th Ranger, in episode 29, the latest the 6th Ranger has ever debuted in a Super Sentai series to date. He operates separately from the main Time Rangers, but always on the side of good, never dropping his dickish demeanor till the end. By the start of the last quarter of the series, you'll likely notice that Dolnero and most of Londares doesn't desire much more than money and their own well-being, to the point where Dolnero will often temporarily ally with the Time Rangers to stop Gien's more monstrous schemes. We'll get into the messed up details about Gien later, but it becomes apparent that he and his increasing obsession with mayhem becomes the main threat of the show, to the point where TPD Captain Ryuya appears in 2000 to correct the timeline to prevent the annihilation of the 31st century, which involves keeping Gien alive and being a dick during his 
his brief stint as Time Red after kicking Tatsuya, his ancestor, off the team. It takes the other future Time Rangers rebelling and Tatsuya choosing to make his own tomorrow to take us back to the status quo. Clinched by this amazing tactic of Time Robo riding on top of V-Rex to defeat Gien's robot. Something that can be replicated with the toys, but I can't demonstrate that myself because V-Rex and Quantasaurus Rex command outrageous prices on eBay. This episode is followed by a clip show whose only saving graces are having an English version of the OP and the amusing ending of Naoto offering the financially struggling Time Rangers with a big payday in return for cleaning V-Rex. Throughout this last chunk of the series, while Honami starts dating Domon properly, Tatsuya and Yuri start falling for each other to the extent where an entire episode revolves around who can out soon today the other. The final arc involves time holes threatening to wipe out two-thirds of all life in 2001, caused by a fight between Gien's final robot and V-Rex, both of whom were powered by the rare elements from earlier in the series. Dolnero arranges for the rest of Londares to head back to the future and tries to kill Gien, but gets killed himself, but not before giving the Time Rangers the location of the remaining prisoners. Tatsuya yeets the other Time Rangers back to the future to get them to safety. Tatsuya and Naoto try to contain the chaos alone, with Naoto dying and relinquishing V-Rex to Tatsuya, making him the second dino theme 6 Ranger to die in Super Sentai. The future Time Rangers find out that the 21st century is doomed, but not only does it save the 31st century, but their own lives have been improved as a result of the changing timelines, save for Sion, whose planet is still destroyed because all the action took place on Earth. When they decide that this result isn't worth the loss of billions of lives, including that of Tatsuya, they break away from their impending neuralization, get into a fight with Yuya, and discover the following. During one of the tests for V-Rex and another robot that got lost in time, he witnessed two timelines, one where Gien dies early and the future is destroyed, and one where Gien's allowed to win and the time holes destroy the 21st century. In both versions, Ryuya is the original time fire and dies. Ryuya then orchestrated a plan where he allowed Londares to go back in time, sent back Mecha to help the Time Rangers as necessary, have someone in the past become time fire and die in his place, and help Gien, ensuring that Ryuya himself survives. That's right, Ryuya is the true villain of the entire series as he masterminded everything, all to save his own ass. Naoto dies on February 3rd, 2001. In an ironic twist of fate, Ryuya dies of a gunshot wound after fighting with Ayase on February 3rd, 3001. The future Time Rangers head back in time and help Tatsuya defeat the Zenits and Gien, creating a third timeline. They say their goodbyes before they disappear into the ensuing time storm, with Tatsuya and Yuri confessing to each other before they part. Tatsuya says he'll join his father's company at some point in the future, but on his own terms. Tatsuya is a very well-rounded red, being happy and amiable, but able to carry doubt, sadness, burdens, and so on. Fated to be an heir to his father's huge company, he never liked the idea that his future was written in stone, so he's often the one making the speeches about forging a better tomorrow and such. He also believes that strength should be used to help others, not just to have for its own sake. His and Yuri's romantic arc is handled much more subtly than Domon and Honami, and I guess ISA, that's a weird triangle right there. ISA is the terse bad boy of the group. He likes cars and was once a street racer along with one of the prisoners. As such, he acts as the Time Ranger's driver when he doesn't lose his license for one reason or another. He also has a terminal heart disease called Osiris Syndrome that occasionally stops him in combat, something that he only confines in Tasia until a particularly brutal event exposes the secret to the rest of his team. Because of this, he doesn't make very many attempts to bond with people and doesn't care about his own safety in battle because he figures he'll eventually die anyway. He's proto-Akira from Tokyo huger, though played more seriously. As interesting as that is, he otherwise doesn't get much focus despite being half the object of Honami's affections. His apathy towards her compared to Domon means that even those barely count as focus episodes for him anyway. His stories are good, yet either brief or slow burning, leaving him with large swaths of the series of him just being sort of there. Sion is always helpful with technology, often upgrading and tinkering with the other Time Rangers' arsenal. Because he mostly serves as the Time Rangers' IT department, he often doubts his use as an actual Time Ranger, lacking his much physical strength compared to the others. But after gaining a second wind in a certain episode, his intelligence and guile lead to the more interesting solutions in the show. His alien nature is touched on a few times, but isn't his only defining characteristic. He doesn't need to sleep on a normal basis, only going into hibernation for one week of a year, which causes problems for the team in one episode. Or does it? Domon, the big brawler of the group, oddly has the second most focus, getting a lot of episodes as a result of being tied to the Honami subplot. He was a grappler in the future and was banned from the sport for missing so many matches in favor of hitting on girls. He tends to grow the most homesick for the future out of the group, having multiple breakdowns as a result. 
All of this gets wiped away in favor of his situation with Honami, but instead of development, this sort of just comes across as entirely rewriting the character. He starts out rather annoying, but calms down a little as the series progresses. I still don't know if I'm going to forgive him for the episode where he decides to quit the Time Rangers after feeling unappreciated, and then helping a dude start up a soba restaurant while there's a monster on the loose, even if the soba making helped to defeat him. Yuji's cool for being a no-nonsense pink. One of Dolnero's agents killed her family when she was little, leading her to have a personal stake in the mission to arrest Dolnero. She's then kept around as a voice of reason and the leader when it comes to strategy, though Tatsuya eventually becomes the field commander. She learns to loosen up, live in the present, and trust her teammates. She eventually falls in love with Tatsuya, who she initially butted heads with frequently. As such, while she's given less episodes than even ISA, her development is much more gradual and subtle throughout the whole series, never being completely ignored. Naoto has an arc written for a much more villainous character, but beyond being kind of a dick and sometimes resenting Tatsuya, he's not doing that much to advance his quest for power besides just helping the Time Rangers whether the action is actually happening on City Guardian's property or not. He initially assumes that the monsters he fights have to be killed on sight without understanding that these are merely lawbreakers of varying degrees that have to be arrested. This is highlighted by an episode where Londares frees a prisoner and said prisoner wants no part in the day's plan, wanting to simply be refrozen and serve his sentence. Naoto has to be convinced by Sion to spare his life, despite being a monster-like being. He's a better foil for Tatsuya than a character himself. Tatsuya was given power but defies it, while Naoto had to work for his power yet he relishes it. For the side characters, Honami was sort of a gimmick for one of the weirder plots to be carried all the way through the series, but I didn't hate her. She wasn't annoyingly trying to expose the Time Rangers the whole time or anything, instead pining for Time Yellow and later Dome on himself. Amusingly, the end of the series, which skips forward to a year later, reveals that they actually had a baby, something referenced in Gokaiger. Mr. Osami is the standard, oh my son has to join the family business or I'm gonna disown him, but he would have done well to have one last scene mending his relationship with Tatsuya. I like Tak, he's a decent mentor surrogate with a hint of snark every so often despite mostly functioning as a plot device and info dumper. Londares is a decoy villain group. They are definitely the villains of the show, but they aren't what the show continues to be the true antagonist. That antagonist is fate history, and ultimately Captain Ryuya. Don Del Nero is just a greedy mobster, though he has an honorable streak, seemingly to honestly care for Leela and saving Gien from death in return for giving him medicine. Leela is just comic relief, moving on. Gien was originally a simple-minded yet friendly human who went crazy from his life-saving cybernetics, a problem only kept in check through an inhibitor key until Ryuya destroys it. Ryuya is considered the true main antagonist of the show, as he sent Londares back in time. Or allowed it, anyway. I'd have assumed he was doing morally questionable stuff when he was first appeared to try and ensure a greater good through less than legitimate means, but the fact that he did it all for himself was a neat twist. His insistence that he was just doing what the other Time Rangers were doing, trying to make a better future, does make one think. In this new third timeline, who gets screwed over? I still think he just needed one more reason to do what he did, and then it can call him a great villain. Overall, I give Mirai Sentai Time Ranger an 8 out of 10. This is a great show with a compelling story, likable characters, cool designs, and awesome music. It loses points based on the wonky character balance and a glut of filler around the first chunk of the series. I hesitate this is a good starting point for Super Sentai, but it's one of the best, despite its flaws. As for how to see it, Time Ranger is among the 12 Super Sentai shows to be officially subbed and released in regions outside of Japan, and thus has a DVD box set. For all these releases, the quality leaves something to be desired. The resolution isn't great, the frame shakes at times, there's grain and distortion at the edge of some of the frames, and from what I've read, the translations can be a bit off. I advise you support the official release in some capacity so Hasbro can give the okay to release Abba Ranger onwards, more specifically so we can get Decker Ranger, come on. Now I hear you all saying. What about Time Force? Here's the deal. Power Rangers has been talked about a whole bunch on its own, and me covering it alone would be treading relatively well-worn ground. That being said, when I talk about Power Rangers, it will be in direct comparison to a seasoned Sentai counterpart instead of a regular review. I'll say up front, it isn't always Sentai good, Rangers bad. There are times where an average Sentai is greatly improved upon or reimagined by Power Rangers, other times where the source material should have been left alone, and others still that both succeed and fail together on their base concept. 
Until then, that's it for me for now. What do you guys think? How did you like Time Ranger? Who is your favorite on the team? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like and subscribe for more reviews of anime, video games, movies, and tokusatsu. Also hit that bell icon so you know exactly when a new video comes out, and share this video with someone who might find it helpful. Thanks for watching. This is Brian from MechBlade Studios, signing off. Please.